uncovering questions about the safety of a popular form of birth control. More than two million women use the Mirena IUD. Good morning, Indiana anchor Beth Vaughn worked with our Call 6 investigators to find thousands of women reporting complications. Rarely seen government documents show that women have been talking about problems with the Mirena IUD for years. Problems that have left some infertile, in pain, and others in need of surgery. This is the Mirena IUD. I started getting severe pain. It's a piece of plastic wrapped with a second little piece of plastic that has a hormone built into it. And that it was horrible. We simply insert this up into the uterus. They told me that it needed to be removed as soon as possible. We pull the applicator out, take a pair of scissors, cut the string at about this length. And I would never recommend it to anyone. A patient can choose to leave the Mirena in for up to five years. At the five-year point, we can simply pull it out. It turned out to be a nightmare. Sarah's IUD perforated her uterus and floated into her abdomen, just like in this x-ray of another woman. Doctors performed surgery to remove it. Sarah is one of thousands of women who have complained about problems with the birth control. RTV6 obtained these rarely seen Food and Drug Administration reports, which show more than 70,000 complaints since 2000. Some are minor, like acne, headaches, and back pain, others are not. Since 2008, close to 5,000 women reported device dislocation, which can mean the IUD became embedded in the uterus or migrated outside the uterus. Abdominal pain is common with close to 4,000 complaints. More than 1,300 women reported the same problem as Sarah. The IUD perforated their uterus. Attorneys Don Chimileski and John Clamaco have filed lawsuits on behalf of five women who experienced complications. They expect to file hundreds more. We have 900 cases in-house. These are Pretty horrific injuries. Don says the IUD lacerated one client's liver. Another needed an appendectomy and hysterectomy as a result of a uterine perforation. She was 22. What these people aren't being told is that at any time after this device is in place, it can perforate the uterus and cause these complications. There are currently more than 220 cases filed in federal and state courts. It says to me that there's a problem with this device. I think it's really a crying shame. I, I, I think that. If you polled physicians, we just don't have that opinion that this is a defective product. Dr. Thomas Frank is the director of family planning at Metro Health Medical Center. Medical evidence is quite clear that Mirena IUD is, is one of the absolute safest forms of contraception that's available today. There are currently 2 million women using Mirena. Dr. Frank has prescribed it since 2001. Mirena is really appropriate for any woman who is potentially fertile who doesn't want to get pregnant. It's amazing, so convenient. Allie Thompson is pleased with her IUD. You don't have to worry about taking a pill every day, and it lasts for five years, so you can't beat that. Mm -hmm. I don't think I took my pill today. Bayer Healthcare Pharmaceuticals manufactures Mirena, but declined an on-camera interview. In a statement, they say they take the safety of our products very seriously. Seriously. For that reason, we continuously review the safety profile of all of our products worldwide. The FDA says no drug is absolutely safe, and approved drugs show their benefits outweigh their known risks. The all overall risks of the Mirena IUD are tremendously less than the risk of the other devices that are available today, and certainly much less than the risk of not using any protection at all. Sarah still has pain on her left side. Her doctor told her it's nerve damage that will never go away. I mean, you think you're doing something to help yourself and your family and then it My life is way too busy to worry about pregnancy. The only baby that I want to worry about is this baby. Then those of us who make birth control have the perfect no fuss completely life altering solution for you. But we understand that you don't want me to mansplain about birth control, although I am the one that makes it. Uh, so take it away, Jess, you relatable, relatively cool person our viewer might like to be if they were cool. Thanks, Roger. Birth control, the simple solution for the woman willing to do anything to prevent a pregnancy. <laughs> Other than asking the guy to take responsibility for taking prophylactics. Or maybe you did, and he just won't. Either way, now I'm getting drinks with my girlfriends, because that's what women do. And this body-altering medical stuff will sound better generalized by my gal pals. I need birth control, but I don't know what kind to choose. Don't worry, there are so many options. You can take the pill, which will affect the hormones in your body, tricking it into thinking it's pregnant when it's not. That's why I won't want to make tiny humans pop out of you. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Just make sure to take the pill at the exact same time every day. Because if you don't, it won't work as well, if at all. Looks like you just wasted 60 to $130. <laughs> okay, because having sex without a condom does feel pretty good. <laughs> I mean, not at the risk of No, we never say that. We say we do it because we just aren't ready for a baby, but we will be eventually. 
The pill's great. It just has side effects like weight gain, nausea, depression, migraines that could indicate cancer, or a lack of sex drive. So you won't even get pleasure from sex. The pill can also change who you're attracted to. So once you go on the pill for that special guy, you might not even be attracted to him anymore. Now we're young moms. Because it's okay to need birth control if you've already had sex to procreate and you just cannot baby anymore. Mommy! I have a kid? Yep, but only the right amount which is when you should use an IUC, an intrauterine contraception, which they shove up inside of your uterus by forcing your lady junk to open all the way up to your cervix. And you'll be awake and aware for the whole process. But don't worry, you can take three whole Advil beforehand. Doctors will tell you that you'll deal with some slight cramping, but in reality, you'll feel like someone is forcing a metal tea up inside of you and your body is trying to push it out, but it can't. Then for the next month or so, you'll feel nothing but constant stabbing pain because your body is still trying to eject the foreign object. But once your body adjusts, you never have to worry about it again, unless it impales you from the inside and you have to have it surgically removed. You two are hearing me say all this horrible stuff, right? I mean, yeah, it's just there's no other option, right? Ah, but there are other options. You could get an implant in which they slice open your arm and stick a little rod in that provides constant hormones into your bloodstream. Or you can just get a shot of hormones once a month. Don't want hormones? You can do a diaphragm or a sponge that you simply shove up inside of your baby cave. That sounds really uncomfortable. It is. And they get stuck and they cause these yeast infections. But if you're looking for a real no fuss option, there's the patch or the ring with no side effects at all. And Oh, right! The ring and patch have caused blood clots that have killed people. So everything has some horrible side effect. And your insurance will probably cover it. Unless your job finds it offensive that you use birth control. Because that's a thing. If you have insurance at all. But it's all worth it so my partner can raw dog me without worrying about babies. We do make birth control methods for guys, like a pill or a shot. Sounds like a lot of work. Well, you could get some condoms from a doctor or a clinic. Yeah, condoms are tied on my wee-wee. No, they aren't. Nobody believes that, bro. Doctor, what's your thoughts on birth control pills? We talk about hormones. Mm. I mean, that's basically what those are. Hey. Good, bad, yeah. your thoughts. Um, Dr. Sheely wrote the foreword for my first book, and he included in that foreword that birth control pills were abomination on womankind. And I didn't know whether to leave that sentence in there or not. <laughs> But they, they are. They really are. They are totally messing up women's natural hormone rhythm. The major, major problem, and so this is the women who find me in their 40s who have been progesterone deficient their entire life because they've been on birth control pills too long. Because what happens with the birth control pills is it's stopping the ovulation. Mm -hmm. And the only way women get progesterone is once the egg ovulates, uh, what's left is what's called the corpus luteum. And that corpus luteum slowly puts out progesterone over the next few weeks until it's it's gone. And then when the progesterone is gone, that's what triggers the period. Okay. So when you stop women ovulating, they don't get progesterone. There is no, hmm. there's no progesterone coming from the uh, natural rhythm of having eggs rupturing in, in, uh, every, you know, every 28 days. Mm -hmm. So we have all these women literally around the world now who are chronically progesterone deficient. And that leads to the fibroid tumors, the ovarian cysts, and uh, just such a list of problems. And a lot of women who find me for help, who start in describing immediately progesterone deficient symptoms, and they're just getting worse and worse and worse. And um, my first question is, have you been on birth control pills? And invariably they have. What so, are some of those symptoms? I mean, you mentioned the tumors the, and things? And yeah, that's right. That's the major ones okay. because those are from estrogen dominance. And, the, and fiber tumors are huge, and very large in incidents. Um, and uh, what lead to hysterectomies because mm. the answer is ban, well, gee, let's remove the whole uterus. And um, so, and for years and years and years now, we've had 645,000 hysterectomies performed in America alone. And a good portion of those are because of just fibroid tumors, which if women hadn't been on the birth control pills, they probably wouldn't have developed them to begin with. So this is one of the major, major problems. Is that something that can be corrected if someone, if a woman gets off the birth control pills, can the body kind of regulate itself it, again? It depends on how long she's been on and the size of the tumors. Some of the tumors get very large. Um, I've had women who have successfully used uh, progesterone, natural progesterone, uh, and bring themselves out of it. Um, but I've had women that it just it didn't work. So again, it's an individual. This is an oral contraceptive containing a mix of estrogen and progestogen, known more commonly as the pill, the first medical drug made specifically to treat people who aren't sick.
Certainly in the 60s, it was incredibly liberating to have the pill. The pill completely changed women's ability to pursue whatever their dreams were. Younger women are tossed on birth control like candy. When the pill is suppressing the hormone that induces the ovulation, it is also suppressing the person emotionally. Do you remember having any side effects? Immediately I felt myself emotionally becoming really irrational, almost like manic at times. One doctor put Erica's x-ray of her lungs up on the screen and said, this was caused by the new ring. Our daughter, our 20-year-old daughter, was brain dead. We just don't want this to happen to, you know, any more families than it has. It's your choice what you choose to take, but you need to make an informed choice. Losing a child is something that we don't want anybody else to experience. As clear as a bell, I remember the day she got in the car and she said she put me on birth control pills. And she said, and this is gonna be great because not only is this protection against pregnancy, but this is a new pill and it's gonna prevent PMS and it's gonna help with my acne. This was, to her, as she have even said in her own words, the miracle pill. More recently, they developed these newer progestins. I'm not a gynecologist and I'm not a businessman, so I don't know why. The only important thing to know is that it would appear that these drugs have a greater tendency to cause clotting. The doctor came in and he said, your lungs are filled with huge clots. And right when they were getting ready to take me up to the ICU, he asked me, are you on birth control? And I said, yes, I am. He says, what are you taking? I'm like, I'm on Yaz. And he goes, well, the good news is, is that you're here. The bad news is, is that the majority of people who have this don't make it to the ER. She was taken by ambulance and had multiple heart attacks on her way to the emergency room and, and in the emergency room. So I was able to talk to the emergency room doctor and he asked if she was on birth control and I said, yes, the Nuva ring. And he said, I believe that's the problem. We arrived the next morning, saw her, her eyes blinking. We uh, first thought that was, oh my gosh, she's gonna be okay. But that was, that was, uh, that was caused by the brain basically shutting down. Here goes Brittany. Hi, show me a trick. We just kind of got ready in her bedroom and we went out to a club. And I remember when we first walked in, she said how loud it was. She said it was so loud. And then, like, because I have a big dance floor and, like, we all love to dance. And she's like, I don't feel like dancing. And I just thought it was really weird because, you know, we've always gone out to dance. Yeah. She was telling you that she felt like her heart was so racing, like, yeah, really fast. And then all of a sudden, her eyes kind of roll back and she just... And when we got to the hospital, you know, I kept saying no medications and my mom's like, well, yeah, she's on medication, she's on birth control. And I'm like, oh, I didn't even think about that. When you think about using, a, a, you know, a pharmaceutical intervention for a healthy population, it's easy to forget that this is a medical treatment, an intervention rife with potential side effects and risks. When I was buying these magazines, I would buy, you know, all of them. Of course, the checker would ask me, are you in it? Why are you buying it? I just tell him my daughter died because of this birth control. I show him the article and one checker actually, the very first day that I bought it, um, said that she has this, she just started taking it about a month ago and she said she has some pain in right at the top of her thigh. So I told her she needs to go in right now. I handed her the magazine. thousands of lawsuits and the product's still on the market. I'm told that I should file a, a report with the FDA and they said, unfortunately, we don't have much funding. We don't have enough funding to respond to all of these. I said, but my daughter died. She died because of this product. I'm not anti-government or anti-FDA, but when I found this out, I was just, what do you do? If your daughter died as a result of pulmonary embolisms, stroke, or heart attack because of the NuvaRing, would you still consider this drug as having an acceptable risk factor? We feel that the drug has been labeled, uh, it was labeled appropriately. Here's the warning. Thrombo th thromboletic disorders and other vascular problems. Thievo, I can't even understand this. This needs to have a big old label right on the front, like cigarettes say, this can kill you. This needs to say the same thing. Are you currently on the pill or any hormonal birth control? Nuvering. Nuvering. And what's your experience been like on it? Um, I feel really, really good on it. I really like it. There is a lot of stuff out right now, though, that makes me concerned about being on it. So, I don't know. I mean, I, it's kind of like you pick your poison. If you had a room full of 10,000 women and you told them that you had this nice product that you could insert for three weeks and take out for a week, you didn't have to uh, worry about taking a pill. But 
a few of you in this room are going to die because of this. I wonder how many of the women would actually use that product if they knew there were safer alternatives out there. The drug companies push the statistic that says these types of drugs are safer than pregnancy. The counterfactual here, what would have happened in the absence of the treatment, the drug companies use pregnancy. What they ought to be using is, the comparison is between these types of drugs and other forms of birth control. Our daughter was really strong, and our whole goal is in her honor to inform women of these dangers. If she knew what we now know, she would be right here doing this, because she would be incensed at what's going on at the expense of women's health. Hi, I'm Dr. Kelly Brogan, and I'm here to talk to you about the birth control pill. So despite having taken it myself for 12 years, I have come to believe that it represents a significant obstacle to mental health and appropriate hormone balance. And when I talk about the interplay between adrenal, thyroid, and sex hormones, I use the analogy of 3D glasses, so that if you were to cover up one of the lenses, you just can't expect the picture to be quite right. So these days when I meet a patient who complains about flat mood, low libido, weight gain, irritability, depression, and anxiety, one of the first questions that I ask is, are you on the pill? And it appears that there is a subset of patients for whom synthetic hormones are a really bad fit and can exacerbate either pre-existing psychiatric symptoms or manifest new psychiatric symptoms. And there are a couple of plausible mechanisms that explain why this might be happening. The first is that synthetic hormones like those in birth control pills raise things called thyroid and sex hormone binding globulins, which effectively lower the free hormones available to do the very important work that they do. And this might explain why uh, people who take birth control often complain of things like weight gain, low libido, and sort of a general flatness. These pills can also interfere with antioxidant and inflammatory uh, markers, such as something called CRP, and have also been shown to diminish important minerals and vitamins like selenium, magnesium, zinc, vitamin C, and then B vitamins like B6 and folate. And because of what we're learning about genetic variants that can interfere with folate metabolism in some women, particularly in women uh, who are prone to develop depression, anxiety, and other mental illnesses, this can be a very significant uh, interference, and particularly one that may negatively impact a future pregnancy. So what are the options? If you're using birth control for hormonal balance because you have PMS or even something called PMDD, which is a more severe um, mental health variant of PMS, then there is a better way through functional medicine and personalized testing to balance your hormones naturally. And if you're using it for contraception, then of course there's the old condom, uh, and there's also a non-hormonal IUD called Paragard, and then there are a number of um, basal body temperature tracking devices like one called the Pearly, which is a British gadget that you can order online. So hopefully this has been somewhat helpful in illuminating some of my concerns and introducing you to a different way to think about birth control. Thank you. Oh, there you are. Well, birth control, it's helped me out of a whole ton of sticky situations, but it's not all butterflies and rainbows. This story is real. There is a chemical in birth control that alters a woman's body, and a poor girl out in Australia, it didn't work for her. Suddenly, she passed away. My name is Michael McCrudden, talking about Fallon Karak, here for you on IO. Now we all know the pill does its job to stop with the baby making. It also regulates a woman's flow, that's another positive, and it can cause some girls to go a little crazy. That is what I've heard. I'm not judging, like I go crazy just on my own. Well a young 21 year old named Fallon Kirk, she recently passed away from complications reportedly associated with the pill after being on birth control for only 25 days. So right off the bat there, if we have any young viewers who are like at that point in their life where they're considering taking this stuff, it's important you speak to a doctor, get all the tests done so you get the right stuff, and there are other options options out there, alternative contraceptive methods. So look into those. Or don't date guys like me that want it all on the first day. Soon after taking the pill, she started having negative results. She was feeling weird all the time, she was short of breath, and she was getting sudden pains in her leg and in her ribs. She went to the doctors and they were like kind of baffled, thinking maybe you had an accident, you forgot about it. They really didn't look into the birth control because it's so common, everyone's taking it, they didn't think that would be the problem. Just four weeks into her first pack of birth control, well, she arrived home one day and collapsed on the floor. It's there where she stopped breathing. Emergency scans found that she was generally healthy. What the problem was, well, a clot it had developed in her lung. This affected her breathing, this affected her heart, and eventually, well, it caused the oxygen. She wasn't getting enough, and her brain shut down. Soon after they got the young girl to the hospital, the doctors pronounced her brain dead, and not soon after that, well, they pulled the plug. Now, this is an extremely rare situation and some unfortunate circumstances. All we can tell you girls out there is, you know, be very careful. Now, my brothers and sisters, I come to what may be one of the most common and overlooked sins against God's plan. 
And that is artificial contraception, also called artificial birth control, in its permanent form, which is to have oneself voluntarily sterilized. Both of these, contraception and sterilization, deliberately frustrate the purposes of the marital act. They seek to exclude children from the act, and in doing so, they also contradict the unity of the spouses. Now, Pope John Paul II talked about this in what he called the language of the body. In the language of the body, in genuine marital love, what is said is, I love you. I give myself totally to you. I am yours. What is said in contraceptive sex is, I love you, but. I love you, but I do not want a child with you at this time. I love you, but right now I'm more interested in what you're going to give me. There is no but in true love. If we want to know what true love is all about, all we have to do, my brothers and sisters, is to gaze upon a crucifix. Because that is the image of what true self-giving love is all about. Jesus Christ gave himself totally for us, pouring out even the last drop of his precious blood for us. And the love of marriage is to be an image of that love that Christ has for us, his bride, the church. God established marriage. God has the right to teach us what the purpose of marriage is, and what is right and what is wrong, even in the area of marital sexuality. Now this teaching against artificial birth control is not a new teaching. In fact, it goes back to the earliest days of God's people. In the book of Genesis, in chapter 38, there was a man named Onan. And Onan did not want to raise up a son for his brother who had died, which was the, the Jewish law. And Onan, it says, wasted his seed upon the ground. And God struck him dead, for he did a detestable thing. Now, there have been some modern scripture scholars who have said things like, well, Onan's real sin was Onan was selfish. Well, Onan's father and brother were also selfish. But Onan was the only one who was struck dead because he wasted the seed. In the early church, the question of birth control came up because the ancient Greeks are the ones who had invented the condom. And as these Greeks were converting to Christianity, they wanted to know, could they continue some of their practices? The early church said no. We have the writings of two of the apostolic fathers. One, the Didache, which I mentioned the other night. Another one called the Apostolic Constitutions of Hippolytus. Both condemn the use of birth control. Even at the time of the Protestant revolt, every one of the Protestant leaders rejected artificial birth control. Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, and Knox all rejected it. Calvin, in fact, called it murder. The murder of a child before it had a chance to live. The first time that a Christian denomination allowed its members to use birth control was in 1930. There are people in this church tonight who remember the year 1930. It's not that long ago. It was the Church of England at its Lambeth Conference. And immediately, Pope Pius XI came out with an encyclical condemning that decision, reaffirming what Christianity had always taught on openness to the gift of life. The secular organization that has most pushed birth control is Planned Parenthood. It was started by a woman named Margaret Sanger. Margaret Sanger was a racist bigot who believed that certain races, namely blacks, Jews, Eastern Europeans, the Irish, and others, were inferior races. She wanted to work to keep the Aryan race on top. She admired Adolf Hitler and his eugenic work. She believed that these other races were simply inferior peoples, and she promoted birth control and sterilization and abortion to, for those races so as to suppress them. To this day, Planned Parenthood has a disproportionately high number of their abortion clinics in black and Hispanic neighborhoods. One out of every three African American babies conceived in this country is aborted largely due to Planned Parenthood. My brothers and sisters, there is a racism that is still going on with this. And as followers of Christ, we reject all forms of racism. But we see why she was promoting this. And we see even today that Planned Parenthood is doing things like we found out a few years ago, in Costa Rica and in some of the Central American countries, they were taking Catholic women from the villages against their will and sterilizing them against their will. They defend the one-child policy of communist China. They have no problem with it. They've never protested it, even though mostly it is girls who are being aborted or killed by infanticide. And they're supposedly for women's rights. It is a lie. Now, my brothers and sisters, there was a lot of confusion on this back in the 60s. A lot of people thought that the church was going to change her teaching. 
And I'm sorry if any of you were confused during that time. In 1968, Pope Paul VI came out with a letter called Humane Vitae, of human life. And in that letter, he upheld the church's teaching on openness to the gift of life and predicted that if artificial birth control became widespread, we would see the following. We would see a spread of marital infidelity and a general lowering of moral standards. We would see men losing their reverence for women and regarding them as merely as objects for their own pleasure. We would see governments seeking to impose contraception on their people. That from these we would see a breakdown of marriage and family and more widespread abuse of women and children. My brothers and sisters, everything Pope Paul VI predicted would happen has happened to the very letter. He was very prophetic. It is a proven fact that couples who use artificial birth control have a divorce rate of around 50%. Couples who remain open to the gift of life, who regulate their size of their family through natural family planning, which is entirely natural, entirely drug-free, and entirely approved by the church when done with uh, the right motivation, have a divorce rate of less than 4%. One in two chance of ending in divorce versus one in 25. That itself should tell us something. Hello, I'm Cecile Richards, President of Planned Parenthood Federation of America. I want to be really clear. The allegation that Planned Parenthood profits in any way from tissue donation is not true. What would you expect for intact uh, tissue? What, what sort of compensation? What sort of... Well, why don't you start by telling me what you used to pay? Exhibiting at the medical director's council oh, good, meeting oh, good, um, in a couple of weeks, so I don't know if you'll be attending. Now the president of that will be there. Oh. <laughs> So we had just started a conversation. This is with a clinic. They're a startup that they have been about a year in business. They're a for-profit company that's connecting researchers with people willing to donate tissue. Our volume, thank you for giving it to me, is 800 a year with 16 and 7 trimester. And we're just starting to talk about how the process worked with Novogenics down in um, Los Angeles when I was there. Okay. To back up a little bit, PDFA, our parent body, is on board with tissue donation. But we have to ask for a waiver to do it, and we have to lay out for them what our program's going to be like. That way, I know. You want to play that game? I get it. But, okay, so I no, 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 I want... 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 Uh, if you lowball, I'll, I'll act pleasantly surprised, and you'll know it's a lowball. Okay. What I want to know is, uh, what would what would work for you? Don't lowball it. Okay. Tell me what you really. Oh, that's way too low. I, I, and that's I, really that's way too low. I don't. I want to keep you happy. I've been places that did 52. But see, we don't. We're not in for the money. So why don't you start by telling me where you used to pay here? Oh okay. no, no, I want no, lowball. You really. And we don't want to be in a position of being accused of selling tissue and stuff like that. On the other hand, there are costs associated with using exactly. Space and all that kind of stuff. So what yes. do you think about? Right. So. Way higher than that. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to start at around 100. Okay. Now this is for tissue that you actually take, not just the tissue that the person falls you can't find it. Exactly. Now this is for tissue that you actually take, not just the tissue that the person falls you can't find it. Exactly. Right. What what is what we can use? What is intact? So that's why I'm saying no. Don't lowball. I, I want you to be well, happy. It's complicated by the fact that our volume is so low too. I mean, are you looking at eight and nine specimens or only seven trimesters? You know, 10 to 10 to 12 week, you know, end of the first trimester. If that's if those are pretty intact specimens, then then that's something we can work with. So that's um, a, yeah, that's, that's an interesting concept. Let me explain to you a little bit of the problem, which may not be a good problem. Uh -huh. If our usual technique is suction yeah. at 10 to 12 weeks, yeah. and we switch to using an iPads or something with less suction, or increase the odds that would come out as an intact specimen, mm -hmm. then we're kind of violating the protocol that says to the patient, we're not doing anything different than our care. To me, that's a kind of a specious little argument. Uh, I wouldn't object to asking him, who's our surgeon who does the cases, to use an iPass at that gestation late in order to increase the odds that he was going to get an intact specimen. But I do need to throw it out there as a concern because when the patient is signing something and we're signing something saying we're not changing anything in the way we're managing you just because we agreed to give tissue. Maybe it illustrates things. It's been years since I talked about compensation, so let me just figure out what others are getting. And if this is in the ballpark, then that's fine. If it's low, still low, then we can talk about that. I want a Lamborghini. I want a Lamborghini. I'm <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> Don't we all right? Yeah, exactly. There is no Hebrew or Greek word used in the Bible that precisely refers to sex before marriage. The Bible undeniably condemns adultery and sexual morality, but is sex before marriage considered sexually immoral? According to 1 Corinthians 7, 2, yes, is the clear answer. But since there is so much immorality, each man should have his own wife, and each woman her own husband. In this verse, Paul states that marriage is the cure for sexual immorality. 1 Corinthians 7, 2 is essentially saying that because people cannot control themselves and so many are having immoral sex outside of marriage, people should get married. Then they can fulfill their passions in a moral way. Since 1 Corinthians 7, 2 clearly includes sex before marriage in the definition of sexual immorality, all the Bible verses that condemn sexual immorality as being sinful also condemn sex before marriage as sinful. Sex before marriage is included in the biblical definition of sexual immorality. There are numerous scriptures that declare sex before marriage to be sin. The Bible promotes abstinence before marriage. Sex between a husband and his wife is the only form of sexual relationship which God approves. Far too often we focus on the recreation aspect of sex without recognizing that there's another aspect, procreation. Sex within marriage is pleasurable and God designed it that way. God wants men and women to enjoy sexual activity within the confines of marriage. Song of Solomon's and several other Bible passages such as Proverbs 5.19 clearly describe the pleasures of sex. However, the couple must understand that God's intent for sex includes producing children. Thus, for a couple to engage in sex before marriage is doubly wrong. They are enjoying pleasures not intended for them, and they are taking a chance at creating a human life outside the family structure God intended for every child. While practicality does not determine right from wrong, if the Bible's message on sex before marriage were obeyed, there would be far fewer sexually transmitted diseases, far fewer abortions, far fewer unwed mothers and unwanted pregnancies, and far fewer children growing up without both parents in their lives. Abstinence is God's only policy when it comes to sex before marriage. Abstinence saves lives, protects babies, gives sexual relations proper value, and most importantly, honors God.